The next connector we're going to do is the DB9, 9 pin. Okay, we're going to do the male connector on this one. And I've already opened the package and you can see there's a number of pieces here. Some pieces for the back for strain reliefs and we're going to use the smaller cable here, just a twisted pair with shields. So we're going to use the, the smaller strain relief of the bunch. And the way this is going to go together, this actually fits in a little slot here in the back. The connector is going to slot in up here at the front. We're going to put the top part of this on and then we're going to use some of the machine screws and nuts to hold the whole assembly together is how that's going to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin by preparing our cable. Like the rest of the cables we do, we want to make sure that we have things like our strain relief goes on and also want to make sure that our heat shrink is on. So we're going to make sure all of that is on before we start. And then since this is a, you know, half shell arrangement, we can put this on after we do our solder work here. So we're going to take a look at our connector and it's like, okay, what pins are what? And they're very difficult to see, but if you look closely, you'll find that the top left here is actually pin one. And then you go two, three, four, five, and then the bottom row is seven, eight, I'm sorry, six, seven, eight, nine. So when we're doing something like RS-232, we're typically soldering or crimping or connecting to pins two, three, and five. So here, that's going to be pin one, so we're going to be do pin two, and that's going to be transmit. Pin three is going to be receive, and pin five is going to be the common shield connection. So as I go to flip this over, pin one is now here, and pin five is here. So I know my shield connection is going to go there. So two is going to be there, that's going to be my transmit. And you can see the way the solder cups are. Um, if I were doing pin seven and eight for uh, CTS, RTS, those would go here on the bottom, but I'm only doing two, three, and five, so we're going to work on the connectors here at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and begin to finish preparing our cable here. We've got a good bit of room to work with within the connector. Let's go ahead and begin by removing the jacket. We take the jacket off. We see some of the little orange nylon that we're going to remove here. We're going to find our drain wire. Twist those strands together and we're going to find also our foil shield. Okay, so we take a look at this connector. Remember that's pin 1. So pin 5 is going to be over here. So that's going to be our shield connection for 5 and then 2 and 3 for our transmit and receive. So all of this is going to fit inside this connector. And I can even trim a little bit of this back. I don't want to trim this one back too far because I don't want to put any strain actually on the solder connections themselves. So five is going to be over here and then we have two and three. So this is how it's going to go together. And these solder cups are not very deep by the way, so we're not going to have to trim too much off. So let's go ahead and begin removing some of the outer jacket here. And again we can test fit here, pin 2, and see how far it goes into the solder cup, which is about right. And then pin 3, and then we'll do pin 5. So let's go ahead and finish preparing our wire here. We're just going to lightly tin the conductors themselves. We're going to make sure our iron is clean. And we're going to tin our iron here. Lightly tin our wires. And bring the soldering iron to the back side of the wire, applying the solder to the wire itself. Now our cable is ready. Let's go ahead and prepare our connector. We're going to be working on the top row here. We have five, two, and three that we're going to be working with. Let's go ahead and add a little solder to these cups. Make sure our iron is clean. Pre-tin it. These cups are very small, so it's changed to a smaller tip to make it easier. So we're going to go ahead and apply heat to the cup. And 
put solder in the cups here. Again, making sure the iron is tinned is going to help our heat transfer. Make sure it's clean. The brown stuff that you see there are actually the impurities that the Flux is cleaning up for us. Okay, so we've prepared our connector. And we're going to do two, three, and five. Make sure our iron is clean and that we're pre tinned. And we can do pin two. And let it cool. And I'm going to pre position this slightly so it goes into the cup easier. Again, just trying to make sure the tip is clean and that it's pre tinned. Oops. That one is getting a little hot. Not only is this uh, tip smaller, it also runs at a hotter temperature, so I can't be on here too long. So let it cool. And now I'm going to go ahead and put some heat shrink on the shield. And get some of our small heat shrink here. A little long. Trim it back some. And then we can go ahead and put this into the cup. Take our iron out, make sure it's pre tinned, and then we can come around and connect our shield. And let it cool down. I've got a little bit of a whisker there. It just doesn't want to go away today. Okay, so we've got pins two, three, and five. I'm going to go ahead and bring my heat shrink up. And what I'm going to do with my heat shrink is I'm going to shrink down the part on the shield first. And then I'm going to bring this heat shrink up and make sure it covers the transition point here. So let's go ahead and bring over our heat gun. We can bring up our rubber grommet, which is slid way down the cable here. There's our rubber grommet. And we can go ahead and begin to put the shell together. And this will vary a little bit depending on manufacturer. how that goes together. You can see there's already a nut there from earlier. So we can put in one of the machine screws. That's one side. And the way the nut fits in there, it actually keeps it from turning as we finish this up. Okay. 
Okay, and that's our DB9 male. And now we'll move on to the DB9 female. I've already opened up the parts package here and you can see all the parts to it. At the back here, are attached to the uh, little rubber strip, you see the strain reliefs for it and you can see the various sizes. We're going to be doing some small cable here, so we're going to use the smallest of the strain reliefs. And the way this is going to go together, you can see our half shells here and this is going to fit in the back. And then the connector is going to go on, slot there, and then we're going to put the other side of the shell on it. And then we're going to use some machine screws and nuts to hold the assembly together. Okay, so we've prepared our cable. Let's go ahead and prepare our connector. So this is the front of our DB9, and it's a little hard to read, but you would find the pins labeled here on the front, one, two, three, four, five, and the bottom row, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to turn this over, and we're going to find that pin one is now over here on the left. So one, two, three, four, five. And on the other connector that we did, pin three was transmit, so we're going to put that to the receive here. So that was the red, so now we're going to put that to pin three. So what we're looking at is black, red, and a common shield. So again, black, red, and common shield. Let's go ahead and prepare our connector here. Now that we've prepared our connector, let's go ahead and put our conductors in. Now we can apply our heat shrink. And let's go ahead and finish up our assembly. Our little rubber grommet has slid almost all the way down to the other end of the cable. So let's go ahead and bring that back. Here's one half of our shell assembly. And we'll put the rubber grommet in the slot. We'll put on the other side. We can slot one of the nuts in. Insert the machine screw from the other side. That's our first one. Let's go ahead and do the other one. Putting our nut in on the back side. Again, putting the machine screw in on this side. And we can tighten it down. Okay, and that's our DB9 female. We've completed our DB9 female, and now we have a DB9 male to DB9 female, such as we would use for our S232 communications. Like any other cable assembly we make, we'll test it, and we're good to go.